everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is part four in the series where I'm showing you the behind the scenes of how I created this app design and case study for a smart diffuser concept. If you missed the first three videos, I'd recommend giving them a watch before you move on to this one. And I'd also recommend you check out the project on Behance for more context if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So in the last couple videos, we planned for and completed our research and drew some conclusions from our interviews. And so now that we have a little bit of a feature list um, and things that we wanna include in the app, now we're gonna go through and start mapping them out using information architecture. But first, what we need to do is think about all of the touch points that are really important to make this experience successful. And what I mean by touch point is what different points of interaction are important to design for in this experience. And so this could be a lot of different things, some including an app, like a mobile app, a web app, an app on an iPad, an Apple Watch app, those are all different touch points. Also a potential touch point is a website, maybe voice like Alexa or um, the Google Home, notifications, and maybe even augmented reality. And lastly, of course, if there's a physical product involved, then that is also a really important touch point. So figure out for your project, what are the important touch points that you need to design for? For me, it was the physical product, the diffuser, the mobile app, as well as the notifications. Okay, so once you've identified the important touch points and figured out which ones you're going to focus on for the project, then it's time to start the information architecture. So this is basically how you map out the flows of an interaction in a very basic way. So what features and what information are in what um, you know, parts of the interface. So with a mobile app, it's common to have the first level be the tabs, um, which you know you would normally find on the bottom of an app. And so I, with a lot of moving things around, I settled on these final four tabs, which are rituals, diffuser, benefits, and settings. And to be fully transparent, this information architecture is not what I had originally put together in this phase. Whenever I was coming up with my features and um, sketching out the IA in the very beginning, it looked very different from this. And only after testing and reiterating did I come up with this final information architecture. So you just want to take your best guess of what's gonna be the most successful. And then once you start sketching and designing, then this is definitely going to change. But it still helps you to map out what all of the important features and interactions are so that you can move on to the next step of sketching. It's also a great opportunity to start doing a little bit of UX writing on a very basic level. So for example, I decided to call these rituals. I decided to call the benefits tab benefits instead of health or progress or anything like that. So decisions like that can start to be made during this step in the process. And next, once you have a first draft of your information architecture web, then you can start some sketching. So this, in my opinion, is where it gets really fun. You can start to think about how you want this app to look and function, and it can be really, really rough. You do not have to get into uh, making this pixel perfect or anything like that. In fact, you shouldn't. It's really just a waste of time at this point. So get out some sketching paper. This is the page that I use. I will link it below if you would like to print these out and use them. For me, it just saves me a ton of time. So once I printed those out, I printed out a ton of them so I could just kind of go to town and keep sketching and iterating on um, some different key moments. The first one that I started sketching with was creating a new ritual. And as you can see from these sketches, I have a ton of things crossed out. There are millions more pages that I didn't use and I'm not showing. Um, this really is an iterative process. And so don't be hard on yourself when you're sketching. It's all about exploration and seeing what works. So what happens to me a lot of the time is I'll be sketching and then I'll hit a roadblock where I'm like, wait, no, this is not going to work. It has to be like this because you have to be able to get to this screen or you have to be able to do this. This is all stuff that's happening really quickly throughout my brain as I'm sketching. 
and it really just comes with practice um, and not just practice in general as a designer but practice specifically with this design problem so give yourself a good amount of time for sketches i would say more than just one day i would sketch for a while set them down take a break and then the next day come back to them see what works and what's not working go back with some more ideas sketch again and just keep doing that with all of the different moments or flows that um, you're going to be tackling so like i said since this is such an iterative process and a lot of it is happening like really quickly from my brain to my hands as i'm sketching and back and forth it is a little bit hard to convey the process that i go through um, in a really detailed way so if you have any specific questions about sketching i encourage you to write them down below in the comments and i would love to answer them or maybe show you something that might be helpful um, but again it is hard to really convey the exact like, mindset that i'm in whenever i'm sketching it's just something that's really personal and i think if you're a designer you totally get that but i would love to help out if you have specific questions so leave them down below all right guys, that's it for part four. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and share it with a fellow designer. And make sure you're subscribed because next week is going to be a video all about wireframing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.